ladies and gentlemen, to Long Box Chronicles Month here on Reaction and Review. Not only, guys, is this Long Box Chronicles Month, this is also the 350th episode of Reaction and Review. And I couldn't be happier to hit that kind of a milestone. And for episode 350, I wanted to find something special. I wanted to find a movie that I, that I myself have been dying to check out, and I have found it. It is an animated movie from 2013. That movie is Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Now, for those of you who don't read a whole lot of comic books, the now The Dark Knight Returns is by far one of the greatest comic books ever written. And if you have not had a chance to read it, I do highly recommend you go out and you check it out. And it also stands as one of my favorite comic books ever. The fact that Warner Brothers and DC made a two and a half hour animated adaptation, to me guys, that is fucking awesome awesome and as long and as long as this thing at least sticks mostly to that legendary comic book in terms of uh, it, it, in terms of exactly where the story goes then this thing here is going to shape up to be one of the greatest superhero films ever made i have no idea though exactly how loyal this thing is if it's even loyal at all uh, but I still have high, high hopes. I want this thing to be amazing. And the only way I'm going to find out if this thing is good at all is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Batman The Dark Knight Returns. You know, guys, I would just, I would just like, like to say right now. This thing is fucking amazing, and I am really impressed by how fucking loyally this thing is sticking to the source, which actually makes this infinitely better. I am fucking adoring this right now, guys. You know, guys, in the short time I, I have been watching this, Peter... Peter fucking Weller as as Batman is quickly becoming, in my eyes, one of the greatest casting choices ever. He's so fucking perfect, guys. Oh, and uh, while and since I mentioned awesome casting earlier, why don't we talk about Michael fucking McKeon as Doctor fucking uh, Wolper? This is perfect, guys. McKeon was born to was born to play this role. It's just amazing. You know, guys, I am genuinely sorry that I haven't had a real fucking like a real fucking like reaction in the in this video so far outside of holy fuck this movie is awesome, but that really, guys, is like all that I can say say right now is this shit is amazing, and I'm loving every second of it. And we are now a little over halfway done, and I'm hoping for the second half to be as fucking amazing as the first. Well, this is a little bit darker than it, you know, was in the comics, but you know what? This scene actually is benefiting from being from being fucking darker. This is really fucking amazing. <laughs> you in hell. <laughs> I was wondering exactly how awesome that was going to turn out and my god, that actually was even better than it was in the in the fucking comic. Guys, that was Wow, I'm actually kind of speechless by how fucking amazing that scene was. Holy shit. You know, guys, this feels really, really weird. We are very, very close to the big final showdown between fucking Batman and Superman, and I am almost giddy, because I, I can feel it. This thing is going to be fucking epic. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. Uh, Fucking uh, awesome. Guys, Bruce. I love this movie. This thing is amazing. Well, guys, that was The Dark Knight Returns. Let me shut that off. Holy shit. 
Well, um, before I go into the review, I should really stress. I have to stress this. Um, everything that I am about to say has a massive bias on it for two big reasons. Number one, I'm a big fan of Batman, and normally I, I am willing to give a lot of Batman stuff a little bit of extra slack because it's Batman. And two, this thing is a direct adaptation of my favorite Batman comic book of all time. So naturally, the fact that it turned out this fucking good, I am coming into this thing with a huge bias just as, just as a fan. So... I just sort of want to put that out there before I start talking. Um, and before I talk about anything else, I do have to talk about loyalty to the source. Because this is based on Frank Miller's uh, comic book from the, from the 1980s. And when, it comes to, and, and when it comes to adapting the book, this thing did a spectacular job of carrying over every single storyline character arc char and as well as all the characters and all and all and all of the depth everything here works so well uh, and it and it's and it's all done incredibly well but i do have to stress it also is not a perfect adaptation of the of the dark knight returns comic um, in fact, actually, they in fact they actually took certain certain scenes and uh, they made them a little bit less you know gruesome, uh, and then they kind of balanced that by taking some scenes and making them drastically darker than they were in the in the in the book. So, so basically, guys, we still have here a really dark film, except it's dark in different ways for slightly different reasons, and uh, honestly, it totally works and i love it because it works i also love it because it was able to make those few minor minor changes and it didn't kill the film itself because uh because guys this because uh this story at least the comic it was based on was written so well that you honestly couldn't 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 you know just go in and just wildly make changes you had to almost fucking surgically change things in in order to keep the story going and in order to keep everything really strong and uh this film accomplishes that in so many amazing amazing ways now let's talk about the writing uh first of all um almost everything here in terms of in terms of character depth story arcs most of that did come directly from Frank Miller's comic books. So honestly, guys, it's really so. It honestly is not a shocker because this thing was written back when Frank Miller knew how knew how to write. Anyway, um, before he started to devolve into whores and hookers and other unseemly bullshit. Anyway, uh, so so they so they basically had that as a framework. And then the writers for for the film had to come in and they had to do all of those little bitty tweaks, and it works. Um, and 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 I am going and I'm and I'm going to say that this right here is one of those very rare instances where you actually can watch the movie and you can read the book, and it's very difficult to say that one of them is better over the other. This right here, guys, is one of only two instances I know of. Where the movie is just as good as the book, and the other instance is Fight Club. So yeah, guys, we have here a very rare, rare case of you know that, and the writing is to thank for it. Well, the writing is heavily to thank for it. And uh, once more, guys, since I'm talking about writing, and since this thing did use tons of dialogue and everything else, which came directly from the comic, if you haven't read The Dark Knight Re Returns, please, by all means, go out, pick it up, download it. You really should read it. The book is fantastic. I can also say the same thing about about this, but I have to try to explain a little bit more why. Um, so yeah, guys, writing here is just awesome from start to finish. Um, the acting. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, if I were to list off m my favorite actors who have ever played as Batman, um, very, very close to the top of that list now is Peter Weller, because he turned in a spectacular showing here as Batman as Batman. And when it comes to people who have uh, voice acted as Batman, he is far and away the best. Uh, and really, he is, and really the only two people I can think of who sort of top him are Michael Keaton and Adam West. And Adam West is just because I'm a big fan of the 1960s Batman show, so once more there's sort of a bias there. Anyway, 
So yeah, guys, Weller was perfectly cast as, as Batman. In fact, the entire cast of this thing was cast perfectly. Every single actor had the... They they were all given their perfect their, their their perfect role and they turned in a stellar showing. There was nobody here who phoned it in. Nobody here nobody here tried to fucking suck. Nobody here was nobody here was trying to overact. Nobody here was you know turning in you know like wooden wooden shit. No no this was all top notch acting. And in fact this is some of the best acting I have seen from a direct to video animated film. In years, no, act, no, wait, fuck that. This actually is the best acting I've seen in a direct-to-video animated film ever, and that is saying a lot. So, uh, well, actually, no, that isn't because a whole lot of voice acting and direct-to-video shit always sucks. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the acting here is awesome. The writing here is really, really stellar. Animation. I do have to talk about the art style because if there was any one absolute massive negative that came from the that came from the comic it was that the art style was incredibly ugly and a lot of people are not fans of the of the art style used in Frank Miller's Batman books in fucking general normally um so rather so rather than try to take that rather sketchy and sort of you know ugly art 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 style and try to translate it onto film they came up with a slightly newer, newer, newer art style, which still, which still kind of sort of harkens, harkens back to the positive elements of the artwork seen in the comics, but still is able to go out and forge its own visual, its own visual identity, and that is perfect. Um, so yeah, guys, art style here is awesome. Animation here is smooth and fluid. It's it really is some top-notch stuff. However, that honestly is not a huge shocker, considering the fact that DC now 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 this sort of considering the fact that DC Comics has been putting out top-notch animated films for years. But this one is by far one of one of their best. But still, DC has been putting out awesome awesome animated stuff for years now. So honestly, though, to have you know comments about animation and all that, and then just saying that it's stellar, well, that's kind of well, that's kind of par for the course. So honestly, this thing here, it wasn't trying. It, it really it really wasn't trying to go out of its way to break down any fucking barriers or anything in terms of in terms of animation. But everything which is here is is beautifully drawn and is fantastically animated. The score, um, it's very difficult for me to actually, to actually describe the score in this thing. I was hearing a lot of stuff that kind of harkened back to films such as Robocop and, uh, one, and one film I heard a lot of, uh, like similar, you know, sounding music here from would be Escape from New York. There is a lot of music here which sounds almost which sounds almost like it would have fit very well into into escape from into escape from New York. Now mind you, I loved the score in both in both Escape from New York and RoboCop. And the fact that this thing is very similar to both of those in terms of in terms of score is fantastic. I loved every piece of music here and I'm almost tempted to go out and get the fucking soundtrack because this was some awesome awesome stuff. Um I really, guys, cannot. To, oh yeah, the uh, sound mix here is also done very, very well. Uh, everything here, like everything here, is mixed well. It sounds perfect, guys. When all is said and done, am I able to recommend Batman: The Dark Knight Returns? Oh fuck yes, I can. Again, mind you, that though is coming from somebody who knew everything about this thing before I even stepped in, because I'm a huge fan of the comic. I'm a huge fan of Batman in general. This thing is quite possibly one of the... No, actually, this is one of the best Batman movies I have ever seen. I would have to say it's the second best Bat... But I'd say it's the second best Batman movie I've ever seen. The only one that beats it, and again, it's just simply because of a bias, because I watched it like a hundred times as a kid, is the Batman movie from the 60s. So yeah, this thing stands head and shoulders above every other Batman film I have seen. This thing stands head and shoulders above Burton's films, Schumacher's films, Nolan's films, and the few other animated Batman films I've seen. This thing topples and towers over every single one of those. If you, and if you are a fan of Batman, if you are a fan of The Dark Knight Returns, or if you are a fan of fantastic action films, 
this thing is stellar. And this fucker is going to have a very happy spot on my Blu-ray shelf. And after all of the hassle it took me to finally get this thing on Blu-ray, I am beyond happy to have this thing on Blu-ray. My God, guys. You know, I wanted to find a good movie for episode three, 350, and oh my fucking God, I found it. I really am tempted to watch this entire movie again right the fuck now. That is how good this thing was. I loved every frame of it. I loved every second of it. But I think I'm going to take a break from this. I just mentioned RoboCop because of the awesome score and because Peter Weller was also in that. I'm going to go watch RoboCop. In fact, I might even watch all three RoboCop films. Why not? Then I'll dive right back into this. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of the 350th episode of Reaction and Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.